What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Winnipeg Jets and UFA Sean Monaghan. This was one of their big splashes ahead of the trade deadline Sean Monaghan brought in to be the number two centerman behind Mark Shifley and he did very well in the power play. He had a big impact, had a hat trick even, uh, you know, before the end of the season, but come playoff time in the Jets' five playoff games, really didn't do a whole lot, just the one assist. Did have a pretty good regular season. This is a guy whose career's, you know, been up in the air, actually missed an entire season, but now being back and having back-to-back -back really solid years, especially this year, just, a, just under 60 points in 83 games, that's really really solid and he had good production but just sometimes it felt like it was really empty calorie points sometimes he came up big but it felt like some other times he really just disappeared and in the playoffs like I said before was definitely one of those times now Monaghan is a unrestricted free agent so you know Jets brought him in as potentially a rental but Elliot Freeman reporting that the Jets are working hard to re-sign him and I dislike this for many reasons, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree because, hey, he did really good on the power play. The Jets need help on the power play. I get that. But is that the number two centerman that you want behind Mark Shifley on a team that's going to be going for it? I don't really think so. I think you have to look at maybe a different option. And there's multiple reasons for it, and I'm going to go over them now. The one big thing is I worry about the term for Monaghan, because he's had a lot of short-term deals here, prove-it contracts, not getting a lot of money. He's going to want to get paid, and he's going to want to go somewhere where he can have, you know, probably a four or five-year contract. I worry that it's going to be in the four and a half, five million dollar range, maybe even more. I mean, 60-point guy, it's not impossible. Uh, he's only 29 you know, those guys kind of get paid in free agency. So I fear that the Jets are going to maybe overspend on Sean Monaghan when in a year's time, they're going to be clearing over $12 million with Nate Schmidt and Neil Pionk, you know, coming off the books as both those guys are UFAs coming up in the next season. And, uh, you know, with those guys off the books, that opens up a ton of cap for Winnipeg. Those are two arguably dead assets guys just aren't worth that much money nearly six million a piece the jets could benefit big time but if you blow let's say you know five million dollars on a guy like sean monahan for an extended period of time four to five seasons you're pigeonholing yourself in you know not being able to properly develop your younger players like brad lambert and if anybody's seen brad lambert play on the wing you know he is not a winger he excels at center and that is a big reason why he's been able to take so many strides in his his development he looked incredible for the moose did not look good as a winger prior as soon as he got put at center with the Seattle Thunderbirds he thrived and then he came to the moose played center thrived some more was one of the best rookies in the AHL last year one of the best players period so you know that is a big problem. You're going to eat up cap space with Sean Monaghan, a player that's going to be declining within the next, you know, one to two seasons if he's not going to, you know, next season already, and you're ruining the development of your younger players. Adam Lowry is the third line center on this team. I don't envision that changing really at all until he's gone, right? Or just, you know, falls off a cliff. That's very evident that the Jets are going to be keeping Adam Lowry as their 3C. Are you putting Brad Lambert as your 4C? Probably not, right? You're probably not going to be playing him with like an Ayafalo and a Kapari. Like, you want to play him in the top six. You want to play him where he's going to thrive. So if you're going to play Brad Lambert on the fourth line, it just really does not make sense. And in my opinion, you might as well just be playing him first line minutes with the Moose. But that said, if you don't re-sign Sean Monaghan, what do the Jets do at center? They could easily put Brad Lambert in that position and just decide to, you know, take the highs with the lows, just roll with the punches and let the guy develop properly. And maybe, you know, you end up with a guy like kind of how Wyatt Johnson's turned out. This Dallas Stars have put Wyatt Johnson in a position to succeed, and he has flourished. A 30-goal scorer, an incredible year for him. Why not Brad Lambert? I think Brad Lambert is just as talented, if not more talented, than Wyatt Johnston. So, you know, you could definitely do that. Maybe you look at Cole Perfetti at center again. You could, you know, for sure take a peek at that. But I think Brad Lambert needs to be seriously considered. And if you are going to go, you know, improving your 2C road if you're not comfortable with maybe, you know, a 20-year-old stepping into play center, maybe, you know, you shoot higher because Mark Shifley is a good 1C, but a very mediocre one. He's not a cup-winning number one centerman, in my opinion. You need to shoot high, and that's what the Jets tried to do with Pierre-Luc Dubois when they acquired him, right? It was going to be that 1A, 1B punch, but Dubois just did not work out here. He played solid, but, you know, disappeared for large portions of time. 
they need a guy that's very consistent and you know there are a few options out there I, I've brought them up before I think Marty Nikas is a great option you know from the Carolina Hurricanes I think he'd be an excellent 2 so he's still relatively young as well I think Anthony Sorelli is a guy that the Lightning may be looking to move uh, you know clear some cap space there as they're going to need to be you know definitely bringing some guys in making some room for Stamkos if they want to keep him I think Sorelli could definitely be on the trade block he'd be a monster for Winnipeg I'll go over some more in another video but those are just two guys that you know I've got my eyes on right now for the Jets and I wonder if the Jets are you know definitely thinking about that Yanni Gord another one from Seattle lots of guys talk about that another time but the number one thing that I worry about with the Jets re-signing Sean Monaghan is that this turns into the Brian Little contract 2.0 and look, I, I don't think that Sean's going to be getting paid like six or anything like that. But I do think that, you know, five, five and a half is pretty realistic. I do think that he'd get that on the open market. So if the Jets are looking to keep him and he says, hey, I need that much money, I do fear that it is going to be turning into the Brian Little deal. And, you know, we got sort of in a weird way lucky with the Little contract. Obviously, it's horrible that he got hurt and he wasn't able to, you know, play out his career as the Nick Ehler slap shot ended his career, never played a game after that. And and his contract went to LTIR and was later traded uh, but you know what if that contract had stayed that would have been a problem right it would have been a lot of salary for a guy that would have likely declined and I think you know this is likely the same situation with Sean Monaghan here I just don't see a world where it's worth it to give him the money when I think there's other options the Jets could do on a short-term basis maybe like a Brock Nelson or they could go again younger like a Martinikis or a Anthony Sorelli invest in a 2C a proper 2C instead of holding on to a guy that maybe has one to two years left of being a 50 point guy and then just riding out years of you know underperforming and slowing down and everything else and the other thing with Sean Monaghan too and man I feel like I'm dumping on the guy I do like Sean Monaghan I just don't like the fit for him and the Jets but one thing that I do worry about is his foot speed his foot speed is horrible uh, you know that's just from all the injuries he's gone through and everything he's not a very fast player the Jets desperately need some speed and that's why I'm advocating so much for Brad Lambert I think if they you know go the route playing him in the top six playing with players like maybe Nino Niederreiter and Cole Perfetti that would be a deadly line that'd be a disgusting line and yes there's going to be some ups and downs with Brad Lambert but I think in the end you definitely end up with a better player by season's end and I can totally see like I said before the Jets trying to use him as the Wyatt Johnston or as their Wyatt Johnston right we already heard that Scott O'Neill is looking to be playing the youth a little bit more uh you know now that he's the head coach of the Winnipeg Jets he said that in his interview looking to be playing the youth he's going to be looking uh, you know at a more analytical approach a little bit of a modern approach so I do think that there's hope for that I know the Jets do want to try to sign with Sean Monaghan but I just don't know if it does make sense for them in the long run but that's just me uh, that's just my thoughts on him I don't think the Jets should re-sign him but what do you guys think leave a comment down below should the Jets re-sign Sean Monaghan should they not I'd love to hear from you guys uh, that's really all I got today uh, leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next one go Jets go bye bye